Michigan head coach, nine-time NBA champion, five rings as a player, four as head coach of the Golden State Warriors, one of the 15 best coaches we've ever seen, and a better person than probably coach Steve Kerr here on the Morning Rose, brought to you by Xfinity. At home or on the go, you'll get the fastest internet to all of your devices. Steve, thanks so much for joining us this morning. I know it's early out there in Houston. You're probably cutting up some film. How you doing this morning? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Oh, we're good, man. We're, we're we're feeling good, man. Playoff basketball is right around the corner. You guys are playing well. The women's tournament's going off. We'll ask you some questions about that. But you guys have been playing so well on the road. And I know there's a big emphasis on that after last season. This year, you guys have played world of 4-1 on that last road trip there and the big game tonight against Houston. What has been the key to bringing that energy on the road? Because you guys do have one of the better road records in the league. Yeah, which is a complete turnaround from last year when we couldn't win a road game. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wish I had the answer for you. Um, I, I don't. I mean, it, you know, last year we were dominant at home. This year we're about 500. So uh, it's been a strange season in that regard. Um, I can't figure out any of the, the road home splits, but I do know that we're, we're playing at a high level right now. We're playing good two-way basketball. Our defense has been excellent. Uh, for the most part, until last game, I think we've we've taken really good care of the ball uh, the last couple of months. Um, you know, really cutting back the turnovers, which has helped, and mm -hmm. uh, and the guys are really connected. They're they're really playing together, supporting each other. It's it's been uh, it's been a really fun season coaching the group because they've all been so great. Um, we're just we're just desperately trying to get into the into the playoffs because I, I I think we could do some damage if we get there. Steve Kerr, presented by Great Clips. Great Clips in sports success is all about team effort, and the same is true for your hair. Great Clips is going to be great. You said you talk about how you guys are connected defensively, and obviously when we talk about defense with the Golden State Warriors, it's Draymond Green. That play the other night, huh. his last four minutes, him ratcheting it up. I asked one of the better plays I've seen defensively in a long time, the block, the steal, with Kyrie Irving coming downhill. Can you discuss that play there? Have you seen a play like that? Because you've played with some great defenders in your day, Steve. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen Draymond do this so many times that um, nothing surprises me with him. He's just so smart. Uh, he's so um, he's so much bigger and stronger than people realize because he, you know, he just has long arms. I think the seven one wingspan, uh, incredibly strong. You know, uh, people can't push him off his spot, and then he's really quick laterally. So he's got this great combination that. Uh, you know, it it, it it sort of belies his uh, his his physical stature. That you know, you look at him, you go, well, he's like six five, six six. He's you know, he shouldn't be able to do what he does, but he's been doing it his whole career. That's why he's heading for the Hall of Fame. But uh, that was just an incredible block, and I I thought the the defensive play of the game. Yeah, I feel like the defense has been super ratcheted up the last couple of games, but offensively for Draymond is is where I'm I'm really excited. It does feel like when he's when he's squaring up to the hoop, when he's going into the lane hard, finishing with both hands, the offense just opens up in the half court for him, and then now all those passing lanes open up for him. Is that something you guys are preaching to him? Like, hey, it's okay to shoot a couple of those of those little middies and attack the lane because it feels like his whole offensive repertoire opens up when he's shooting. Yeah, yeah, and, and it really, I mean, he's the guy who deserves the credit. He's, he put a ton of time this past offseason into his three, uh, his, his three point shot, um, including a lot of corner threes. Um, you know, when he plays with Trace, a lot of times we'll have Trace in the pick and roll and Draymond will be in the corner. And, and, uh, you look at the numbers this year. I mean, he's, he's, he's not a high volume shooter, obviously, but, uh, but he shot the, the ball really well. And I think that's given him some confidence. And, and with the the floor opened up uh it gives him those driving lanes and and uh, when he attacks you know he's really good either uh finishing at the rim or or setting up those lobs that he likes to throw to wigs and, and jk and trace so it, it's it's really fun to see draymond clicking offensively and i think that uh that kind of rounds out our team we seem to be at our best uh, i think when when draymond is scoring that trace jackson davis draymond lineup and then you throw wiggins in there that's been a, like a, a little wrinkle that we hadn't seen a lot of this year. What do you see when those three are out on the floor together? Well, number one, I think uh, you know they're all playing well at the same time. So when we're putting them 
together right now, we're getting great ball pressure from Wiggs. Um, you know, it, we're get, we get rim protection from uh, from Trace, and it allows Draymond to play a little bit of center field. You know, where he can kind of roam the the paint and and you know thwart drivers and and uh, force passes back out to the perimeter. And I think there's a psychological component too. Draymond Draymond loves having a shot blocker next to him so that he can really. You know, kind of patrol and and uh, and and take care of everything that's out there. When he's the center and he's really good at it, and we play him a lot at the, at the five, he just doesn't have as much help at the rim. And so uh, there are times where I can see him get a little frustrated. Um, and you know, those are the times where we kind of can sense like let, let's get another big in there. Let's let's help Draymond out a little bit and fortify our defense. You know, Steve, and we're talking to Steve Kerr, head coach of the Golden State Warriors, here on a morning roast on ninety five seven the game. You know, you mentioned how much fun you're having coaching this team. But has it been the most challenging in the sense that you have so many players and so many options that when it comes down to crunch time, the last five minutes of the game or the last six minutes of the game, trying to find the right combination, has it been the most challenging season in that sense for you, coach? I would say yes, because uh, as you said, Bonte, we've got a, a bunch of options, but not always uh, perfect clarity. You know, we, um, we, we, we've got uh, multiple guys who, right. who are capable of finishing games, and if they're all playing well, uh, we've got to make decisions down the stretch. And, and the other night was a perfect example. You know, we uh, mm-hmm. we're trying to close close that game, and I've got Chris Paul on the bench because we've got uh, we've got a, a lead, and I'm thinking more, you know, defense, and then all of a sudden we turn it over, and, uh, and it's like, uh-oh, we we got to protect the ball here. I race Chris into the game and then, you know, bring Gary back, and, uh, you know, and J.K. wasn't even available that game. So, you know, you, you think about it, we, we just have uh, – it's a good problem to have. We I think we've got – you know, ten or twelve guys who are all capable of being in that closing lineup, but uh, but you got to pick five, and it's not always easy to to select the right five. Speaking of J.K. Kaminga's played so well this season. What's his what's his availability availability? Excuse me for tonight against Houston. I know you said he could be available. He's questionable with the D ten to nine. And how are you going to get him back and incorporate him back into this lineup? Because that seemed to be the sticking point this season. You get healthy for one game against Milwaukee, then Steph goes out. It has been the case all season long. So what's his availability, and then how will you integrate him back into this rotation? Yeah, we'll see. I, I, uh, I, I he scrimmaged uh, the day of our Dallas game at home, um, and and uh, and looked pretty good. But um, I have not talked to the training staff this morning. Um, I have. We have to see how he responded. We didn't have any practice yesterday, so just a flight. And uh, so we'll see how he's feeling this morning. And uh, the training staff will let me know his availability. But um, yeah, I've got to make a decision um, whether he starts or not. It's it's um, it's up in the air. I've, we're going to meet as a staff. I mean, we've won four in a row, starting Trace uh, with Draymond on the front line, mm-hmm. and uh, and that's you know generally in the past when I, my the way I've handled things. If our team is playing well, I I generally stay with the same group. Mm-hmm. But that also disrupts the uh, the bench rotation. It changes things there. And and Moses is playing really well. Gary right. Payton's playing well. So there's a lot to consider um, with that question. But <clears throat> regardless, we want him back. I mean, we, we need J.K. Yeah, I mean, he was ascending and playing really well. The guy who's playing really well right now is Andrew Wiggins. And I was listening to CP3 on the post game with Bonte, and he's saying, you know, we're telling him, be aggressive, be aggressive. And he's taking great rhythmic threes. It feels like he's attacking the cup. Defensively, you can see all that effort. Are you guys running specific things for him or trying to set up certain uh, lineups so that he can get his shots? Like, how does he stay consistent offensively, I guess, is where I'm going with that. Well, it, you know, we're we're, uh, we're definitely putting him in more high ball screens than we were earlier in the year, and uh, we have better spacing uh, right now. If you if you just you know if you think about the last few weeks, whether it's J.K. or or uh, uh, or, or Trace, either way, we've got Steph and Clay out on the floor, um, so there's good spacing for Wiggs to attack downhill and and. Uh, and we we can switch quite a bit defensively too um, with with that group. So um, he's really just found a, a good rhythm. He's put the work in, and uh, he's playing with a lot of confidence. And uh, yeah, he's one of the main reasons we've uh, we've been winning 
a lot of games lately. I'm glad you mentioned it because with Willard and Debs a couple weeks ago, you mentioned how he can't go four or five possessions <laughs> without touching the basketball. <laughs> we all agree when we're watching the game, we're like, man. And in that third quarter, I thought Tuesday night when the Mavericks were on that 23-2 to run, Wiggins really asserted himself, and it was like, wow, that's a blast from the past. But I also think people forget before he went away due to personal reasons, it felt like he was starting to pick up where he left off last season when he was playing so well. He feels like the X, I'm not even going to say an X factor, but he feels so important to the success of this team. And I think people underestimate that with his ability to be on an island defending at a high level. And again, I think people forget he was a 20-plus point-per-game scorer in Minnesota, Steve. Yeah, I mean, he's the number one pick in the draft for a reason. I mean, you know, the guy is long and athletic and capable of of, of scoring at a high level. And, and uh, you know, there just are times where, uh, you know, we just he gets lost in the shuffle a little bit. So I think the combinations uh, that he's playing with have helped. Uh, there's more space on the floor now than there was earlier in the year when he was playing with Looney and, and Draymond. And, uh, but the biggest thing is he's in rhythm. Uh, he's feeling good. You know, and he's uh, and he's giving us uh, great minutes when he's out there, and it's 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 really fun to see. Wiggs is is kind of you know everybody's favorite guy in the locker. He's 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 such a, a wonderful guy. Uh, everyone loves him, respects him so much, and and uh, and we're happy for him uh, for this recent success. Hopefully, he can keep it going. Hey, coach, did you get a chance to check out Iowa versus LSU? I did not see that game. I've been watching a lot of the women's games, though, um, in the tournament. And, uh, and then, of course, I, I, as soon as I got home, I, I had a, a, a prior engagement during that game. So as soon as I got home, I watched the highlights. And, uh, man, what, a, what an epic game for, huh. for Caitlin Clark. You know, watching her play and watching Iowa play, their style of play reminded me so much of, of your team's offense with free-flowing, back-cutting, sharing the basketball, playing with joy, transition. I mean, it's a testament to what you guys have built over the last decade that it's it's now bled over into all the other leagues. It's 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 the best basketball to watch. Well, it is fun, and, and uh, you know, I, I really give Steph a lot of credit. Not that he needs any more credit in, in any aspect of life, but I, I just, when I watch a lot of the girls play, I think he has inspired a whole generation of, mm. of young women's players, uh, not only because of the style of play, and you know, and, and pe- people can watch Steph and, and actually relate to him, you know, because he's not uh, – He's not six eight and two hundred and fifty pounds like mm-hmm. you know LeBron or somebody where you, you you know you can't really look at LeBron and say well I could do that one day you know but <laughs> yeah. you look at Steph I mean he you know Caitlin Clark clearly um, has has been influenced by him just like Sabrina Ionescu has and and I think it's not just Steph's play it's his advocacy for the women's game you know he he really he's done so many things uh, to really uh, help the the women's game. Uh, promote it. Uh, the Sabrina three point contest over All Star Weekend was fantastic. Um, you know, he goes to the Stanford games, brings his daughters. Uh, he's got you know everything going with his his uh, Under Armour brand, promoting the women's game, and, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, and, and these girls are just incredible to watch. The, the game has improved so dramatically, and uh, I've been locked in. I mean, I, I can't wait to watch the Final Four. No, we all can. We actually we opened our first hour of the show the other day talking about women's basketball, and the, whole, the entire tournament has been really good. USC, UConn, Paige Beckers, Juju Watkins. I'm already mm. trying to tamper and look at the NBA draft for the <laughs> WNBA team that's coming to the Bay Area. Who can right. we get? Can we get Paige? Can we get Caitlin? Can we bring Sabrina over? But you brought up Steph Curry, Coach, and we're talking to Steve Kerr here, the head coach of the Golden State Warriors, and Look, I, I feel crazy for even actually do this because we know how great Steph is, but his efficiency has been down mm. since the All Star break, and we understand. We watch the games. He's seeing longer, more athletic defenders. The game plan probably for the opposing team is like Steph number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. And he's getting double the trap. But what do you say to him? What do you possibly say to him when he is struggling with this shot, trying to get his offense going? Now again, he's still dropping 22, 4, and 4, but the efficiency right. is down. What do you possibly say to a guy like Stephen Curry when he is struggling with the shot? Well, it's not very often. I don't have any experience with it, to be honest with you. So. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's random. I, I We're think, spoiled, Steve. You know, yeah, I mean, there are, you know, the occasional game where, where his shots aren't going. I, I, I usually remind him what an impact he's making anyway because of – 
the the defense being so focused on him, uh, drawing so much attention that it it really does open up the the game for his teammates. But it's also the pace at which he plays. You know, it's just the the speed and the the throw aheads uh, when he gets the ball in transition. Uh, there's a there's just a different pace that happens when he's on the floor, whether he's making shots or not. And right. and so I, I you know I I will occasionally remind him of how powerful of a player he is, even when shots aren't going in. Um, but I think right now it's just uh, you know he's played more games than he has uh, in any season over about the last uh, eight years. I yeah, think that's true. Yeah. And, uh, so I, I think you know, and we've had a ton of games. This has been a, a particularly tough schedule. Um, I think we're in the midst of eight games in 13 days, and mm-hmm. seems like we hardly ever practice anymore. It's just game, you know, game every other day and travel, and and so I think he's he's a little little tired, but I, I have no doubt that uh, that he'll bounce back. He'll get it going, and he always does. It's it's um, you know it's just part of part of every season how this kind of plays out just because it's um it's a lot of games you know 82 games is a lot you know a lot of people nitpick all of the the minutes that he plays and situations and spots and i know you got a little frustrated with some of the questions that people were asking about that how does that dialogue go between you and staff and the staff uh in game when you're, you're i'm sure you have a strategy pre-game and then you're feeling the game out and you know how does it go is is he is he pretty communicative? Uh, does he communicate a lot with you, or does it fall down on you? Or how collaborative are you guys? I'm just curious how that goes in the fourth quarter, for example. Yeah, we don't really have conversations game to game. We have a few conversations during the year if, if we're going to change the rotation. But it's, his rotation has been similar now for a while. You know, we're taking him out between the three and four minute mark of the first and third quarters, and then bring him back. You know, between seven and eight in the fourth quarter. Um, that hasn't changed. Um, the only game I I veered off from that was the Minnesota game two weeks ago, where I I decided to give him one more minute's rest um, in each half, just because I thought he he was fatigued, and it was our it was actually our our third I think it was our third game in four days, and mm-hmm. we had traveled across the country yep. the day before, and so I gave him one extra minute, and it was I just found it amusing. You know, he goes from 32 minutes a game to to 30 that night. It was technically it was 29:51, and right. I think that 29 <laughs> mark just freaked out the whole country. I was like, oh my god! But it was literally two minutes, and and uh, you know we 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 look at this stuff all the time. I, I you know I I'm, I I make these decisions. Um, to when to put him in, when to take him out, and and um, I certainly I you know don't always make the perfect decisions, but you know trust me I I, I look at every single day I, I I see how he's playing, I see his body, I see what you know the fatigue level. So if I decide to give him a couple extra minutes, uh, you know I'll I'll tell him I'll do it. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but. Uh, I don't think it requires a, a national discussion, that's for sure. All right, Steve Kerr here on the Morning Russ. A couple more for the coach as you get ready to for this Texas two-step in Houston and Dallas. Some big games for the Golden State Warriors. They're up three games on the Rockets in the loss column, but do own the tiebreaker. So essentially up four games on the Houston Rockets, who are playing some really good basketball. Jalen Green, Emo Duke, they're doing a great job down there in Houston. But, Steve, there's been a lot of talk, a lot of conversation about the officials. Now, I'm not trying to set you up to get fined or anything, um, but – I want you to hear this clip from Tom Thibodeau, head coach of the New York Knicks, discussing Jalen Brunson. Then I want to ask you a question about the officials. Who's okay. Tom Thibodeau on Jalen Brunson? He's getting fouled. 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 No, we didn't play that on the loop. That's Tom Thibodeau <laughs> for seven <laughs> seconds. Uh, but there is a lot of – and we watched the games, and even in that first quarter the other night against Dallas, it was murky. You know, Steph, Steph got hacked a couple times. There's been a lot of talk about the officiating all season long. There's a transition there. What can we do to rectify this for next season? Because they're seeing – every game I watch in the NBA seems to be – like last night, there was three guys from the New Orleans Pelicans kicked out of the game with seven seconds left. It was over, and Antonio Daniels went crazy on the broadcast. So what is going on with the dialogue between the officiating and the players and the coaches? Well, it, first of all, they have a really difficult job. I mean, it's it's a it's a brutal job, especially today with social media and also with all the camera angles with replay. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of pressure on the officials to to get it right. And, and then on, on the flip side for the players, this is uh, an incredibly passionate, intense 
profession. Uh, jobs are on the line. You know, there's so much pressure on everybody. So, you know, there's there's always been this dynamic of uh, some contentious times between players and officials. So this isn't new. Uh, I think I think what's happening is the we're, we're really. Uh, the overall, the league, I think we're searching for the happy medium, you know, mm-hmm. uh, between uh, let's not call the, the, the BS fouls, the ones where players are just trying to foul bait and manipulate uh, the game. But let's also have the free-flowing play that, that makes uh, these guys so entertaining to watch. And uh, it's just been an interesting season in that regard because uh, for the first few months, uh you know there were there were so many fouls and so many little ticky tack calls and and um, you know a lot of people complaining. I was probably at the forefront. Just um, you know when 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 players are just baiting a, a refs into fouls, it's it's not a great look. So I love that the league has shifted and they're not they're not calling those um, nearly as often, and uh, which is great. It's made for a much better game. But I do think there's a happy medium. I think there's a, there, there's a lot of uh, physical play that's happening now that uh, is going uncalled and um, so it's uh, we're I think the league as a whole we 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 need to find that balance and it's probably it probably is an off-season thing where you know we all get on the same page because uh, you know we want the game to be as entertaining as possible for our fans Um, and it is a beautiful game we got so many amazing athletes and uh, and I know how hard the officials work. I know how hard the league works on all of this stuff. And uh, but it's a constant, it's a constant effort. You know, things change, uh, you know, periodically, and you just have to adapt and adjust. And the league has always done a really good job of that. Yeah, you know, I- I'm looking at the team right now, Steve, and the young guys have just made so many great contributions yeah. this year. But Jemski has just been. I mean, a revelation, and uh, Trace Jackson Davis has been awesome. Uh, Moody has been ready to go anytime his number is called. Clearly, J.K. has taken a, a step forward. Um, what's the most surprising part of the young guys this year? Like, is there is it their readiness, their maturity, how much they've helped you guys win games this year? It just feels like I don't think you'd be in the position you're in without these young guys right now. Well, I think the most surprising thing, uh, really is, is that, uh, Pajemski and Trace, uh, have made an impact in their rookie years. It, it's really hard to, to impact games and, and help win games as a rookie. You know, it usually takes guys two or three years to really get going in their careers. Um, I asked Steph and Draymond, you know, when they really felt like they were impacting winning in the NBA and they, they said three or four years before they felt like they could really determine the outcome of a game. And, and, um, so it takes time. And, um, so the fact that both Trace and Brandon as true rookies are, are, you know, they are, are helping us win games is, is really amazing. I, I expected Moody and Kaminga to, to, uh, to, to do what they're doing here now in their third years, because this is more the natural, uh, sort of timing of it, you know, where you have a much better sense of, of where you are in the league and what you need to work on and all that stuff. And they've both really emerged. But bottom line for us is, you know, as an organization, we're just, we're just pleased and that all of those guys are yeah. uh, really impacting the games and uh, playing well together and, and being, you know, great teammates and, and really emerging. And it, it bodes well for, for our future. Yeah, and that's well said. It's not easy joining the championship core and playing at this level here, trying to help them get to the playoffs. The rookies have exceeded expectations, no doubt about that. I was going to ask you about books because we talked to me before the season. Shasky, I remember asking you, do you, do you read any books and do you go paperback? And I'm guessing that you probably don't have a lot of time to read books during an NBA season. But I did want to play this for you because I know a couple of weeks ago, Tari Eason was talking about the Warriors. Hey, Warriors, come out and play. And the fellas played it for you. Well, here's Draymond Green. Hey, it's a little clip here, and I want to—I want you to rate this saying because you know about the Warriors come out and play. Now that was terrible, but listen to Draymond Green here. The Rockets coming out to play. <laughs> what would you give that? There? I mean, geez, <laughs> I mean you know this it's is good hilarious. for the weekend. It's fun, but it's just hilarious. We, we can't get enough <laughs> of that drop. 
Well, you know Draymond. I mean, he's not going to let anything go, and uh, I, I think it's all all good stuff. Yep. You know, anything like that. Uh, yeah, I, I heard the Tar Eason clip. Uh, <laughs> it's all it's all fun, man. We're we, you know we're lucky to to be in professional sports, and and our fans are are you know enjoying the the back and forth. So, all good stuff. I'm right. expecting Dylan Brooks to be ready for this matchup, oh, Coach. Boy. Oh boy! I mean, you know how he gets. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he'll be, he'll be out there for sure. He'll be ready to go. And he's been a he's been a big uh, big addition for Houston, you know, and and uh, he always enjoys playing against us. So uh, it'll be a fun game tonight. We always enjoy talking to you, Coach. Thank Thanks you, for Coach. getting up this morning. Good luck today. Good luck tomorrow for this Texas two step against the Rockets and the Mavericks. We appreciate the time today, Coach. Good luck tonight. All right, Coach. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Anytime, head coach of the Golden State Warriors, Steve Curry, reacted out on the other side. 